Welcome back SC fans. Today I'm going to show you how I weather a fresh out of the box after and ready to run covered hopper. It looks like this. Into one that looks like this. All real easy without using an airbrush. Coming up on today's episode of the Seaboard Central. All right, before we get started, let me show you the things that I like to use for a project like this. One of the things I do is I change out the uh, couplers on my all my rolling stock to KDs. And this one, I use the KD119 and I just shave the top shelf off to make it a bottom shelf coupler. Also, uh, prefer exact drill uh, wheels. These are 36 inch uh, Code 88, the fine treads. I just think they got a more prototypical appearance and they work great. To uh, paint the wheels, I used this little thing I got from Micromark. It holds the wheels and keeps those treads clean while you're painting them. All right, for the paint itself, I use, uh, for trucks, it depends on how new they are. The newer the truck, the blacker they will be. So I'll paint them with a flat black. As they as they age, they start turning more a rusty color. So I'll switch over to camo brown. Finally, um, trucks that's been in service for a long time, I'll use this Tamaya Dark Earth. And I also use this for couplers and sometimes wheels. And for also wheels, I like to use this red brown by Tamaya. For weather in the car itself, this one in particular, I'm going to use a wash, uh, which is a uh, this by Monroe Models. This is a called Delta Dirt, and also these powders by Monroe Models, uh, dark gray and medium earth. To seal the car, um, I actually prefer using something like Dull Coat through an airbrush. But you don't have to. You can use uh, this flat clear by Tamaya, or if you can still find it, some testers dull coat would even be better. Uh, but I think the airbrush does a better job in there. And here's some of the tools I use: uh, something like this to uh, cut that top shelf off with, obviously a Phillips head screwdriver, uh, some different kind of files to file that top thing down, some Katie Greasem. Um, you can put this inside the trucks. Um, here's a standing stick that I picked up from Micromark. You'll need some paint brushes, including some micro brushes. Uh, NMRA track gauge to check the wheels, make sure there's, and some kind of container to put keep your screws in. So uh, with that, uh, also uh, a couple other things. Uh, I made this homemade jig with a scrap piece of two by four and some heavy duty music wire to hold the car while I'm working on it. And also something like this uh, with uh, bamboo skewers to hold the trucks and um, just glued some clothespins to hold those couplers. So let's get started. All right, the next thing I do is uh, remove this uh, be careful, don't let it uh, use eye protection. They will go flying everywhere. And I remove the top shelf. Once I get the, this removed, I'll take a file and just go over it a few times just to file it down smooth. To remove that top shelf. First up, I'm gonna paint the trucks with this Rust-Oleum flat black, and I, I will, I'll go ahead and leave the uh, the original wheels in the top part too. The next thing I'm gonna do is paint these couplers with this Tamaya Dark Earth. Finally, I'm going to paint the wheels with this Tamaya red-brown color. 
Make sure you get the backs of them. Those axles. let that dry now to get started on the car one thing I forgot to mention I also definitely use this uh, alcohol and I like to use the 70% uh, and you won't don't want to use too much otherwise you're going to take this lettering off because this stuff is made with alcohol too so I shake it up and what I'm going to do is just get a little on the top here and go go all the way across the top of the car like that and then I'm going to take some alcohol and I'm going to thin it even more and I'm going to bring it down the sides of the car Now it looks dirty now, but I'm going to show you how I clean this up. And this is just simulating all that rain washing down all the gunk and grime and feed corn and you name it on the top of that car. All right, so next up, I like to use these uh, makeup wedges you can pick up at Walmart or any kind of uh, drugstore. And I take most of this stuff off. This is really helping to tone down that new car look. Just go up and down. Go back with your brush a little more alcohol. Take your sponge. Pull it down. Just continue like this until you get it. You don't really see large deposits of that weathering wash. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is take this dark gray weathering powders, and I put a little in the cup, and I wanna go over the seams. I just use a little micro brush like this, and I wanna go run down these seams with it and kinda of Press it a little hard into the seams. We're going to fix this later. I want to push it onto the seams. And just go down the car going over those seams. All right, now that we've used that weathering powder, we're gonna take some more alcohol and just go down the car. Pulling this down. And it just tones this down.
and we'll take a, a clean sponge and gently go over the car. We got a nice effect there. The right, next thing we'll do is the top part of the car. And what I'm going to do is shake up my wash again. I'm just going to put a couple of dots on the ends of it, maybe in between here. And then again with the alcohol. I'm going to go over the top of this. And then I'm going to end up taking most of it back off with a sponge. Just keep playing around with it. Now I'm going to go through and add a little bit of a, this medium earth. I want to get this little dusty right in here. That's what I'm going for in between these panels. Maybe a little bit right in here, around this area. And then I can kind of touch this up. All right, on the ends of the hoppers right here, we get a lot of wheel splatters. So I'm just going to use what's in this cap and this microburst. And where the wheel would splatter along this edge and down through here like this. You can do this. Just kind of fan it out. I do that for both ends of the car. And on this end, I can take this brush and just make that dirty right there. Does that whole well right there be dirty? While we're at it, I can do some kick up spray using a micro brush and go into the car. There's where it would go. We're gonna make this whole area more dirty with this wash. Also on the end of the car, right here, where the wheels from the other car that's coupled to it is going to splatter right up through here. We're going to get that. We can do this chain. Oh, I'll read it. Well. Add a little 
little bit of wash here. Let me dirty that up. I'll go all down in there. Take care of the end of that car. Something else I want to do is take this medium earth weathering powders and go over this area here where they hook up a vibrator to the side of these hoppers to help unload the corn or grain out of these cars. And I can touch up this area too. Now in this car, I'm going to simulate a spill going down the side. And so I just want to take a a dry brush and get a little bit of my weathering powder and just run down the side of the car try to make it a little subtle I can touch that up with a, a little sponge. Creates a nice effect there. How about we create a little rust effect with this Burt Sienna Artist Tool using an X-Acto knife to show maybe where the, the car got scratched somehow. a little bit more down here. A couple of scratches. Just something like that. I want to overdo it just a little bit. All right, the next thing I do is I sand the sides of the uh, wheels. Whenever a, a rail car goes through a hump yard, the retarders grab the sides of these wheels and they keep this part shiny. Now, if it's a unit train or an intermodal train that never goes through a hump yard, you don't have to do this step. But for cars like this one that would have traveled over a hump prior to reaching the Seaboard Central. I sand those down and also I sand the points of these axles down. And so I do this for all four wheels. Make sure there's no paint on the face of these wheel treads. I do that for all of them. Before I pop these uh, wheels in these trucks, I often put a little bit of Katie Greasem in there, which is a little graphite to help them roll a lot better.
Something else I like to do is add a little bit more of this uh, weathering powders like this rusty brown, on the, maybe on the tips of these axles and over those springs. That'll just help to give it a better appearance. Over these roller bearings in the springs. So the dual coat's been added and the truck's been reinstalled and here's the finished product. Definitely a lot different from that new out of the box look and it's a quick and easy way to get a weathered car added to your layout. Here's the opposite side of the car and you can see where it's been scratched up and also you have some uh, load spillage coming down the sides of the car. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, tune in next time and we'll see what else we can get into here on Seaboard Central. Till then, happy model railroading everyone.